we also have uh, Paul Paul Estengo from Government of Gibraltar. Uh, I can see that he has joined. Uh, welcome, Paul. Okay, so our uh, last talk is um, is from Dr. Trevor Trevor Clohisi. Uh, Dr. Uh, Trevor Clohisi has uh, published his research uh, in the Journal of the British Blockchain Association in uh, some time back on fisheries supply chain. Supply chain is an important area uh, of blockchain uh, applications, and his research was was very interesting and very useful. Uh, he conducted a, a, a systematic literature review on the various um, uh, uh, papers summarizing what we found uh, and how we can uh, advance blockchain applications in the domain of uh, fishery supply chain. So I would like to invite uh, Dr. Trevor Cloisi uh, to, to, to say a few words and, and tell us about his, his research. Uh, Dr. Cloisi, can you come forward? You can sit there as well. That's okay as well. Um, hello, everybody. Can hello, you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Fantastic. Um, um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Trevor Clossy, and um, I'm delighted to um, be here today to discuss my research. Um, just a little background on myself before I delve into my paper there um, that you can see in the metaverse um, that I did with my doctoral student and my colleagues, um, Amaya Vega and Graham Heaslip, and um, in terms of blockchain adoption factors, enablers and barriers in fisheries supply chain, and it's kind of preliminary findings from a systematic literature review. Um, just a bit about, about myself, I'm in the School of Engineering here in um, the west of Ireland, um, the Atlantic Technological University, about 22, 000, over 22,000 students across three institutes in Sligo, Donegal, um, I've been researching blockchain for the last 10 years, so um, really came into contact with it in my own postdoctoral research. It was quite avant-garde at the time, and the, it took a lot of, you know, um, took a lot of um, parlay with my supervisor to explain that this was going to be a big thing all the way back then, because there wasn't really many use cases, you know, I'd come across it through Bitcoin. But, um, but I, having read the Bitcoin white paper, I... Um, I saw realms where it could be, you know, administered in supply chains. And fast forward nearly 10 years, um, you know, you can see a myriad of um, applications along supply chains. Um, and in this particular um, piece of research we looked at was, in essence, um, fishery supply chains. So I won't uh, keep you any much longer. I'll delve into a bit about the research um, that we carried out. Um, and I suppose, you know, what we're, it's kind of an honor to be here today to delve into a subject where the frontier of technology, particularly blockchain technology, meets the bedrock of sustainability. Today, I'll just quick overview, you know, onto our research, which explores the transformative potential of blockchain within the fisheries supply chain industry, um, a domain where innovation and, you know, responsibility converge. Um, just a quick overview, blockchain, it's fundamentally a decentralized digital ledger occurs transactions across numeric numerous commuters so that the record information is resistant to alteration. You know, this characteristic of decentralization is core, ensures that no single entity controls the data and it fosters this kind of unprecedented level of transparency, security, and trust. If we align this in supply chains where traceability and authenticity of products are paramount, blockchain impact is profoundly transformative and it's not anecdotal you know I've involved with companies where they've actually implemented this within their, their actual supply chain so it's essentially blockchain promises to redefine transparency and efficiency in global supply chains by providing an immutable record you know of a product's journey from its origin to the consumer so turning our gaze to the fishing fisheries industry you know um, first delved into it you encounter a complex multifaceted industry you know the journey from catch to consumer is fraught with challenges you know for example ensuring the quality and freshness of seafood batting you know illegal and unregulated fishing and adhering essentially to sustainable fishing practices the sector is characterized by its vast diversity ranging from small scale you know artisanal fishers to large industrial fleets such with unique practices target species and market dynamics moreover the industry faces critical sustainable issues with overfishing and environmental degradation which pose significant threats to marine ecosystems 
consequently, there's a need for robust, tra transparent supply chains, and it's not merely an operational, but it's a cornerstone of global efforts to promote ethical, sustainable seafood consumption. Inter-blockchain, you know, blockchain technology, as I said previously, with its ability to provide a variable transparent record of the seafood's journey, emerges as kind of, you know, a beacon of hope. And it also offers a pathway to just not operational efficiency, but a means to ensure sustainability standards and ethical practices and essentially rebuilding trust in the seafood industry. And I suppose our journey, myself, my colleagues' journey into understanding blockchain's role in the sector was structured around, you know, the, the famous technology organizational environment framework. This is a comprehensive research analytic tool that considers three critical dimensions affecting technology adoption. Uh, first, the technology context. So this encompasses the existing technology, technological infrastructure and the specific features of blockchain that could benefit the fisheries industry. Um, secondly, the organizational context. It examines how internal factors within fishing companies and related supply chain entities, such as size, scope, and internal resources, influence blockchain adoption. Finally, the third um, element of this framework was the environment, and this essentially explores the external pressures influencing adoption and regulatory environments for traceability, market demands for sustainability, and really the competitive landscape of the fishery industry. So essentially this framework provides a holistic view allowing us to identify which allowed us to identify not just the technological cap capabilities of blockchain but also the organizational alignments and the environmental factors that are crucial for its successful adoption. And I suppose you know in terms of the fisheries sector you know the framework illuminated a complex web of factors influencing blockchain adoption. Um, you know, our research indicated that organizational readiness emerged as a pivotal, pivotal team. So for blockchain to be effectively integrated, fisheries organizations, you know, they have to navigate the intricacies of their operations from the capture and processing of seafood to its distribution and scale. This readiness is not merely technical, but cultural, requiring a shift towards transparency and collaborative um, efforts across the supply chain. In terms of the environmental context, this too was characterized by complexity. Regulatory bodies worldwide are increasing mandating traceability in seafood supply chains to combat illegal fishing and promote sustainability. I suppose these regulations create a conducive environment for blockchain ad adoption, acting as a catalyst for change. However, they do pose certain challenges, necessitating a careful alignment of blockchain solutions with diverse regulatory environments and standards. I suppose as we delve deeper, the practical implications for business in the fisheries sector become clear. Strategic planning, investments in technology, and personal and proactive approach to regulatory compliance are indispensable. Moreover, the collaborative ethos inherent to blockchain technology underscores the need for industry-wide cooperation. So essentially engaging with stakeholders from regulators to environmental organizations and consumer groups, it's essential to navigate adoption barriers successfully. And I suppose looking ahead, you know, the path is ripe for empirical research to engage directly with the myriad of stakeholders in the fishery supply chain. Such research can validate the theoretical insight from the technology organization environmental framework and uncover practical strategies to overcome the barriers to blockchain adoption. It also promises not just to enhance our understanding, but to pave the way for actionable solutions that harness blockchain's potential to the fullest. And I suppose in conclusion, um, you know, the potential of blockchain to revolutionize the fisheries, fisheries industry um, supply chain extends beyond operational efficiency. It does offer a, a beacon of hope for, you know, sustainability, ethical practices and consumer trust. However, realizing this potential to its fullest necessitates, necessitates a concerted effort to address the barriers identified. It calls for strategic investments, collaborative efforts across the industry, a kind of steadfast commitment to research and innovation. Um, I suppose that's a brief overview of our research. Um, for further details regarding the research in the paper, please do you know, visit the repository in which it's, it's stored on the blockchain, on the British Blockchain Association's uh, website. And um, if you want any more discussions regarding blockchain um, or anything that's going on in Ireland, particularly through use cases, please do contact me at trevor.clahasy at atu.ie. Thank you very much.
I'm not sure if uh, Dr. Nassim would like a final word before we finish our session today, but thank you all. Uh, thank you, Lord Goddard. Thank you, Trevor, um, for a fascinating overview on, um, on kind of progress, insights and the challenges that we're facing based on um, the progress that we're making. Dr. Nassim, I wonder, would you like a last word? that case, I'll be, wish you all farewell, and uh, we look forward to updating you on the various different developments by email over the coming days. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.